Well, unfortunately, lots of people feel their marriage is anything but healthy. And in fact, many husbands and wives say they have little hope for anything to change. But insight from our next guest can change all of that. Joining us now is Emerson Egerich, the author and communications expert behind the best-selling book, Love and Respect. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, Andrew. Good Thank to have you here. Yes, sir. So really, your book comes down to a basic idea of what men really need and women really need as well. And what are those two things? Well, it's based on Ephesians 5.33. We would say that is the summary verse to the greatest treatise in the New Testament on marriage where the Lord reveals to us that a husband must love his wife, that agape, unconditional love that we talk about, and a wife is to respect her husband. And as a pastor, I saw those two concepts, love and respect. Now, the first part of that is not controversial. Everyone would agree you ought to love your wife. But <laughs> the second part, respecting a husband, that became a little bit more controversial. Women say, I don't feel any respect for him. Be hypocritical for me to show it and that kind of well, thing. Well, he should earn it. Right? Correct. Should earn respect, my respect must be earned. He doesn't deserve it. He's not superior to me. I'm not inferior to him. I'm not going to be treated like a doormat. I'm not going to set the feminist team back 50 years. I'm not going to lose a sense of self or identity. I'm not going to give him license to do what he wants to do. I'm not going to subject myself to emotion abuse. But other than these things, Dr. Emerson, but I'm do, really open to But does a man yes. even really know he needs respect? Yes, he does. And he will give voice to that the first year of marriage. You know, you're not respecting me. But at best, she'll be quiet, but she will then profile that as egotistical or narcissistic. And so you have this misunderstanding. Most men serve and die for honor. That the husband says to his wife, I love you so much, I'd die for you. But she says, oh, Harry, you keep saying that, but you never do. <laughs> you know? But the idea is deep within the male DNA. But what happens is we get on a crazy cycle. When a wife feels unloved, she tends to react in a way that feels disrespectful to her husband. And when a husband feels disrespected, he tends to react in a way that feels unloving to his wife. And I call it the crazy cycle. Without love, she reacts without respect. Without respect, he reacts without love. And this explains why we negatively react to each other. And I often ask, have you ever, ever had a conflict with your spouse when suddenly the issue didn't seem to be the issue? This is probably the issue. But she's not trying to be disrespectful. She's crying out for love. He's not trying to be unloving. He's saying, do you respect me for who I am apart from my performance, apart from me earning it, apart from me deserving it? What about this stonewalling that men seem to do? Yes. With the research at the University of Washington, they studied 2,000 couples for 20 years, and they said 85% of those between a husband and wife who withdraw and stonewall is the husband. And partly because physiologically during a conflict, they were measuring the beats per minute, BPMs they call it, the heart beats per minute. He was getting to 99 beats per minute. That's warrior mode. So he has to calm himself down, and he withdraws because that's an honorable thing to do, but she feels it's a hostile thing to do. And that's one of the questions we ask many couples. Is it an act of hostility or is it an act of honor? It depends on whether you're pink or blue. Well, he may learn it's a weapon, too, right? After enough years, he may learn shutting down is going to hurt her. Well, it's certainly his way of motivating her to show him more respect, which doesn't, doesn't work. work any more than when she tries to be contemptuous to get him to love her. No husband feels fond feelings of love and affection in his heart toward a wife he thinks despises who he is as a human being. So we have two good-willed people who completely misunderstand each other during that conflicted moment. Men tend to withdraw. Women move toward aggressively. But they will come across critically, and they will come across in a way that's complaining. And the men were asked, what do you feel about this ongoing criticism? And men feel it's, it's contempt for who I am. She's just using this topic as an opportunity to send me a message she doesn't like who I am. But I know that every woman does what she does because she deeply cares. The nurturing nature of a woman is off the charts. So it raises that question. Is it an act of care or is it an act of contempt? Same thing. Is it an act of hostility or an act of honor? It depends on whether you videotape in pink and blue. And one of our campaigns is to help men and women understand that their negative reaction is really a defensive reaction. He's not trying to be unloving and she's not trying to be disrespectful. God created us this way. So when a woman needs to be loved... What is it about her character? What is it about the way God created women that they need to be loved? Well, that's a great question. I just believe that he's designed that need within her, not the least of which is that she loves by nature. And so one of the challenges for every wife in her own spirit is, does he love me as much as I love him? How is it met by the husband? Well, there are ways in the book that I talk about in my book, Love and Respect. I looked at every passage in the New and Old Testament that applies to the Christ follower to a husband about how to love his wife. And for instance, I put it together in an acronym called COUPLE, C-O-U-P-L-E, and these are based on salient scriptures, to be close to her, to be open with her, to understand her, to be at peace with her, to be loyal to her, to esteem her. She needs respect as well. She needs esteem. And when we follow that track of C-O-U-P-L-E, 
almost every woman will say, oh, yeah, I would feel very loved. So, so we have, if perhaps there's a bad marriage. Somebody, husband or wife, needs to step out and be vulnerable. A man may say, I'm going to love her even if I'm not respected. She says, I'm going to respect him even if I'm not loved. What if the, the one is concerned, my vulnerability is not going to uh, be reciprocated here, I'm afraid. Yes, well, that's a huge fear that I'm going to do the loving thing or the respectful thing, and they're going to not receive that. But the alternative is I'm going to show hostility and contempt to motivate them to be loving and respectful. And so we all come to that crossroads because the, you know, it's kind of like we expect our spouse to come in after 30 years of marriage saying, I had epiphany. What? I now know why you've been negative for 30 years. Why? To motivate me to be positive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so we it's have an to absurd then. Proposition. Yes. And so there isn't really a neutral ground here. And so God is saying, Emerson, love Sarah, even if she isn't lovable or shows you respect. Just trust me here. And every woman would say, if a man consistently and authentically does that, it's very difficult for her to resist that. And the honor code of men is such that if a woman says, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, I'm feeling hurt, I'm feeling frustrated, how do I say this in a way that you don't think I'm trying to diss you? If she uses that vocabulary, almost every man will soften because she's entered what I call the honor code, and it does something to him to be uh, responsive to that in a positive way. One of the most interesting insights I found in your book, you've counseled as, as a pastor for many, many years, and men would come to you and say, my prayer life is not effective. Yes, yes. What's, why isn't God hearing me? What's wrong with my prayer life? And you'd ask a very pointed question, which was what? Well, how are you treating your wife? And that's based on 1 Peter 3, 7, where it tells me as a husband, husbands, live with your wife in an understanding way and honor her as a, a weaker vessel so that your prayers may not be hindered. And that's directly applied to the husband. And how I treat my wife affects how God responds to me. And one of the challenges always is to say to a man, you know, you walk in integrity everywhere, but you said, no one can love this woman. Well, I'm going to tell you that's going to hinder your prayer life. And you just need to say, I'm going to be understanding of her as best I can because I want my communication with God to be open. You wrote this book a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Has anything changed or is this just a, something will go on in relationships forever? This basic Well, I, if Ephesians 5.33 yeah. continues to be applied, in fact, the book continues to grow. It's just on the New York Times twice in the last couple of years after all these years. So it continues to be out there because I think it's a simple message. It's male it's friendly very male friendly and wives are saying, why hasn't anybody told us this? Let's get to some viewer questions. We yes. asked some people to write in with concerns they have in their relationships. First, we're going to go to Jim. He says, I hear advice about marriage, but frankly, my marriage is hopeless, like nothing will help. I don't think she even likes me anymore. Short of a divorce, I don't think we have a chance. Now what? So what can Jim actually do here? Well, I think, again, it comes down to an issue of his hopelessness. Is it because she's committing adultery and there's horrible immoralities going on? And if the answer is, no, that's not what I'm talking about, then you have clashing preferences. That the ongoing tension between them has caused them to not like each other, to perhaps begin to resent each other. And he now feels like she reacts to me as though, you know, she can't stand who I am as a person. She doesn't like me. But my question to him is, are you on the crazy cycle? Without love, she reacts in a way that feels disrespectful to you. The question is, is she a good-willed woman who's trying to get a message through to you? And that's this, I need you. You're the only man that can meet my need. Now, unfortunately, that's a compliment. It is. It's not a complaint. It's a compliment. But she delivers it in a negative, disrespectful way, which in our world as a man, you don't do that. You're disrespecting me. Why would you do that? So he has to decode. Is she really trying to be disrespectful or is she really saying, you're the man, I have a need, and I need you to meet my need for love? He has to decode that because if he takes up a fence and says, you know, she didn't like me, she's disrespectful, I'm sick and tired of this, then he's going to completely misread the spirit of this woman. Let's go to another question. This is from Candace. She writes, my husband is mentally abusive. He abandoned our family for three years. He had an affair. He returned in 2015, but he had another affair. How do I trust? I believe in the covenant of marriage. Well, again, trust is broken. And so betrayal is humongous. I mean, this is the Judas Act. And so this isn't to be minimized. Trust has to be reestablished. Love and respect is given to the spirit of a person unconditionally, showing unconditional love toward a wife who's an adulteress. Hosea was told, go love a woman who's an adulteress. That was Gomer. First Peter says, you win a disobedient husband through your respectful behavior. So this woman is at a point where is she going to do this unto Christ? Is she willing to give her husband unconditional respect toward his spirit as she continues to address the, the past behavior and also 
be very honest, but in a respectful way, I'm having a hard time trusting you. But it seems that he's returned. He's now been disobedient again. But she has to come to a point where she does this unto Christ. If she believes in the covenant marriage that God's keeping her in this relationship, then ultimately she has to see Christ standing beyond the shoulder of her spouse and do what she does toward Christ because her husband doesn't deserve this. And it's not going to be fair to her. But we believe based on 1 Peter 3, verses 1 and 2, she can win her husband through this kind of behavior. It's not fair but it works. Emerson, finances cause a lot of problems in marriage. Here's one from Will. We often hear how finances divide marriages. How can we approach our finances in a way that will strengthen the marriage? Well, this is Dave Ramsey and I have done things together. He really loves the Love and Respect book. And we've talked about the fact that marriage, uh, oftentimes people in marriage feel that the money problems are causing their relationship to go under. No, mm. it's what we call a hostile, contemptuous attitude you have toward your the spirit of your spouse when you're talking about budget issues. If I come across in a harsh, angry way, what would you do with that $500, woman? It's not the money issue that's going to destroy the relationship. It's my lack of love. It's that unloving demeanor. And same thing, if a wife comes at her husband with a contemptuous way, you're not making enough, you're not a good provider, then they could both conclude, oh, you know what? It's because we have uh, insufficient funds. Well, that's a serious stressor, but that's just a surface uh, issue. The root issue is the hostility and contempt we show toward each other while we're discussing finances. And I challenge every couple to make sure they understand what it is that's really going to cause their relationship to go under. And it's not money. It's the lack of love and respect toward the spirit of the other person. It's a great book. It is called Love and Respect. I urge you to get it. And it continues to sell an awful lot of copies, and I can see why. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate you being here.